Welcome to part two of Daf Gimel, everybody. Just uh, one correction is that that Pasuk of Umotzi Diba Huxil is a Pasuk in Mishle, not in Kohelet, like I said. It's the same author, though. Just a different sefer. Yochanan Chakuka Nafak Kriyasa. Yochan, this was his name, Yochanan Chakuka went to the outskirts, to the small town. So he went out to the small villages on the outside of town to uh, inspect things, inspect crops. So Ki Atta, when he got there, Amrulay, the people in the village said to him, because he was coming from the big city, Chitin Nasu Yafos, is the wheat crop this year good? Um, back in the city where all the trading was going on, did the overall wheat crop come out well this year? And it, really it had not, and he didn't want to say it outright, so he said, Amrulam Saorin Nasu Yafot. Well, this year the barley came out good, and they should have inferred from there. He didn't want to say the wheat didn't come out good, it's bad news. He wanted to be more positive. So Amrulay, they said to him, Tsei ubasar l'susim v'lchamorim. Go and tell that news to the horses and to the, ca- and to the donkeys because that's barley is not human food. It's animal food. Dichtiv, and I guess in their anger they quoted a pasuk. This pasuk is found in Malachim Aleph. So they quoted the pasuk that says, Hasa'oren v'hatevin l'susim v'lorechev that the barley and the and the straw is for the horses for the uh for the chariots for the people who are traveling my habu lele memar so Gamar says what do you want the poor guy to say he didn't want to say the wheat was bad he just said the barley was good my havale what should he have said so the answer is he should have said the following ishtakad last year naasu chitin yafot last year the wheat came out good that would have been the better way to say it inami or he should have said adashim nasu yafot the lentils came out good. These are both human foods, and he shouldn't have answered them back with animal foods. Okay, here's the next story. So on the bottom of this page, you have the family chart over here. And here's the story. Rav, Rav was Bar Achuha. Rav was the son of the brother, Rabbi Chia. And he was also Ubar, and he was the son of Achde, and also the son of Rabbi Chia's sister. Now, we, in the chart, you'll see that Rabbi Chia's half-brother and half-sister married each other. So they married each other, and their son was Rav. So Rav was the son of Rabbi Chia's half-brother and half-sister. So Kisalik Lahasam, when Rav went to visit there, there means Israel, when he visited Rav Chia in Israel, Amar Lay, so Rav Chia, seeing Rav for the first time in a long time, said, is Aibo Kayam, is Aibo, Aibo was Rav's father, so he says, is your father still alive? And now, Rav's father was Rav Chia's half-brother, but he wasn't really alive anymore. He didn't want to say he's dead. So Amale, so Rav answered him back, Ima Kayemes, which means, could you, why don't you ask me instead of how my father's doing, ask me how my mother's doing. And her, his, his mother's name was actually Ima in the story. Rav's mother's name was Ima, meaning Rav Chia's half-sister's name was Ima. So he said, instead of asking me how my father's doing, ask me how my mother's doing. So he says, all right. Well, is your mother, how is your mother doing? How is, her name was actually Ima. So how is Ima doing? How is your mother doing, my half-sister doing? So Amrale, he answered him back, instead of Aibo Kayim, why don't you ask me how my father's doing, whose name was Aibo? Um, again, he was running around. He didn't want to say anyone's dead. It was too, too shocking to say it like that. So he, um, at that point, Rav Chia realized that both his half-brother and his half-sister, both Rav's mother and father, had passed away, and that he was therefore in Avelis. So Amar Leil Shamai. So then Rav Chia said to his attendant who was helping him, Chalotzli min alai, remove my shoes for me, v'halich kele acharai lebeis hamerchatz, and carry my, this means my clothing really, the things that I need, after me to the bathhouse, so the Gemara says, based on this, Shema Mina Tlas. From this story, we learn three laws. Shema Mina, one thing we learn is Avel Asr Benina Sasando. We learn that someone who's in mourning is not allowed to wear leather shoes. That's because he told his attendant to take his shoes off. The Shema Mina, we also learn Shmuel Rechoka Eina No Heget Eleyom Echad. That in terms of the laws of Avelis, Shmuel Rechoka, if a person hears 
from a far distance. That means after the Shiva period is over, if all of Shiva has already finished, because apparently Rav Chia's fa- um, s- brother and sister had passed away a long time ago, he just never knew about it. So since it's past the official Shiva period, it's called a Shmur Rachok, a distant hearing, you only actually set up Velus for one day. You don't sit a whole seven days. Vishmami. Now the third thing we learn is Miktsas Hayom Kekulo. Part of the day is like all of it. Um, meaning because he told his attendants, bring my stuff with me to the bathhouse, that meant later that day he was actually going to take a bath, which is something which is usher to a, an avel. So the point there is, as long as he was being in mourning for part of the day, that would fulfill the requirement. And we follow this law even till today in terms of the laws of Avelus, that on a person's seventh day, on their last day of Avelus, they don't sit Avelus the whole day. They sit a little bit in the morning after Shacharis, and then they get up, um, because just the part of the day counts as the whole thing. If you have a certain person who frequently says things like, judge my judgments, eh, when it's a figure of speech that he constantly uses whenever something comes up. So Amre, we say, Shmamina, we see from here, we learn about this person, Midan Ka'ate. He must be from the, sh- from the tribe of Don. Why? Dichtiv, because uh, the bracha that was given to Don was Don Yadin Amo. Ke'echad Shivte Yisrael. Don will judge his nation like one of the tribes of Israel. So this person, since this is frequented in his speech, so it must be that there's something about his soul and something that's connected to the idea of judgment, and he's always talking that way. Ahu dehava ka'azil, a certain person who was ka'azil going va'amar. If a person is constantly saying the following refrain, akif yama, on the edges of the sea, on the seashore, asisne bir asa. Bir asa is a palace. I will establish my palace. The person is always talking about visiting their beach house or how much they really want to be by the water. A certain person who is always saying that. So badku, they looked into this fellow, and they found out the Mizvulan Kati, that in fact this person was from the tribe of Zvulan. Why does it make sense that the person from Zvulan was always asking about to, to live in his beach house? Because the Chsev in the in the description of Zvulan it says Zvulan Lachof Yamim Yishkon. Zvulan at the edges of the sea, Yishkon is where he will dwell. We know that Zvulan was a tribe that was uh, merchants. They used to constantly be on ships going places, and in fact they used to support their brother. Yisachar in his learning through the business ventures that they took. So again, this whole Gemara was talking about speech. So the notion there was that um, something about a person's speech is going to be connected to their family or where they're coming from. Now we gave a couple more sources. We had a source sheet on Lush and Nikias. So just to, to wrap that up, we pointed out the power of speech is extremely important in mankind when the Pasuk said that Vayitzar Hashem Elokim Adam, when M- Hashem formed man, it says he blew into his nose, Vayipapacham Nishmas Chaim, the breath of life, Vahi Adam Lenefesh Chaya, a living being. So Targum Unkelis translates Nefesh Chaya as Ruach Mimalela, which means a speaking being, which means that the most powerful faculty of man is his speech. So we p- tied that in in terms of this whole Gemara is talking about being very careful about your speech. Then we learned this Gemara in Shabbos. You don't have to know it inside, but about basically people um, who say things that are coarse. They could have some very bad punishments against them. Specifically, this Gemara is about people who are getting married. If somebody makes some type of uh, a statement about uh, the wedding night of, this, of these people, some very the Gemara says some very terrible things, even if he has 70 years of good judgment that Hashem was going to give him, Hashem would take it all away. So one must be very careful with their speech. And then we concluded with a machlokis between the Ramban and the Rambam about why is Hebrew called Lashon HaKodesh. So the Rambam, Maimonides in the Mordevuchim, says, V'li gam kein ta'ana, I also have a reason, v'siba, a reason, b'kriyat l'shonenu, we call our language Zeh, Lashon HaKodesh. Why is it called the Holy Tongue? So he says because there's no, so to speak, dirty words in the language. Um, there's no, there's no uh, it's a very clean language. Yudubar behem b'shemot mosh mushalim uberemizos. Whenever you have to talk about a body part or something which is a little bit, uh, uh, I'd say, private or sensitive, we'll put it that way, not dirty. Um, so these things aren't referred to directly, but they're all through mushals, they're all through parables and, and hints. 
We said, for instance, you know, it says, Adam yada es chava ishto. Adam knew his wife chava. Again, he knew her. He uses a language, he uses all sorts of hints. So he says, the Rambam says that's why Hebrew is called Lashana Kodesh. And Nachmanides, the Ramban and Chumash, argues on him. And he says that that's not the reason. The reason it's Lashon HaKodesh is because it's the, it's the language that Hashem speaks and that the Torah was written in that language. Adam and Chava spoke to Hashem in that language. This is the language that the world was created from. And that's why it's called that. And the reason by me, that which our rabbis call in Lashon HaTorah, Lashon HaKodesh, why do they call it that? Shehu mipne, this is Shedivre HaTorah v'hanevuot. The Torah was spoken in this language. The prophecies were in this language. V'chol divrei kedusha. All holy things. Kulam b'lashon ha'hu ne'emar. All of these things were said in this exact language. Hashem speaks this language. He spoke to the prophets in this language. V'hinehu, and behold, this is lashon ha'kadosh baruch hu. This is the language that Hashem yit'ale, who is, uh, yit'ale should be sanctified, honored. I'm missing the word I'm looking for right now, but you get what I mean. He speaks this language in Neviev with his prophets Adato and with his congregation, the Jewish people. Anochi, when he said the the Aser Hadibros, Anochi Vlo Yelacha, Vishar Dibros, all of the Aser Hadibros, Hatorah, Vahanavua, everything, everything is was done in this language. Uba Bara Olamo, and through this language he created the entire world. So that's why it is called Lashan Hakodesh, according to the Rambam. Hope that you've enjoyed this, uh, or as this was useful, this little um, recording that we have here, and Hatzlacha to everybody.